Right. No, no, that, that makes sense. And I think for those listening, you know, especially, you know, some, some of the folks in their twenties, I think it's important to be patient with yourself because like you said, it takes years to master that skill, right? You're probably going to make some mistakes as you're going through this because I, I, well, A, I know I have, right? Where you're, you get a little bit greedy and you're like, oh, well, I can do that again, or I can handle a little bit more. Um, but it's way better than it was when I was like, let's just say late teens, early twenties. I've come a way long way since then. So, I mean, I think that's important. Just understand progress, right? Is uh, as opposed to, per- I think this, the saying goes like progress over perfection or something like that. So, yeah, that or the one I always liked was people would say practice makes perfect, but I think it was Lombardi said perfect practice makes perfect, you know, and it's, and you're never going to be yes. perfect, but I think, I think the best, so I'm a big believer in efficiency and that's why I don't, I don't hear people talk about this enough. I think when you go to the gym, you know, depending on your time frame and what you have, luckily I have a, a decent amount of time and I, you know, how I structure my, luckily with my work and everything, um, just depending on, like I said, when now we're getting into baseball season, I'll, I have to be a little more structured um, because tournaments and we'll be traveling and all that. But the better efficiency you have with your time and not wasting time, either it be if you're getting up in the morning doing cardio, how you're, you know, meal prepping, whatever you plan your meals, you know, and then your training. And when you're in the gym, you know, and as we know, a lot of us get frustrated when people are sitting on their phone on a piece of equipment and you're just like, come on, dude, you know, it's like, so I try not to do those things. I try to use that time the best efficiency I can. And there's times I, I'll get to talking like this because, and this is, I'm a huge believer in this because I was blessed to have some guys that got me going. And back in the day, we didn't have the internet. So you either found the magazine and hoped it was telling you the truth, or you talked to the guys at the gym and they would help you. So I get so many questions daily and I love it because I want to give back. I want to help. And that's why, you know, I have my website. I still write my articles. I still try to put out one article a week. I have hundreds on my site, you know, and I don't charge any. I'm not trying to make money off it. I just like helping people. I think it's the teacher in me, you know, it's just because there's, there's so much that I'm still learning. I tell people this every year. I learn something new every year and I go, how did I not know that? You know, after all these years, because I've been, you know, training and lifting and doing this for over 30 years and competing now for 24. And it's like, how did I not know this? You know, so that, that's, what's cool is still learning it, but no, I I think the efficiency part is a big one is, is I think if people were more efficient with their day and their workouts, they could probably get more done. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit. Like for me, I notice um, as far as the efficiency goes, okay, there's efficiency and obviously making the most out of each set that you do. Like you're not just faffing about, you know, doing a whole bunch of, Uh, sets that are nowhere near let's just say failure or somewhere close to that max effort rep where it's like kind of a struggle you know what I mean or a lot of a struggle you know some people are just kind of going through the motions which is you know could have its place but is that kind of what you mean by efficiency as well or are you more referring to like hey when we're in the gym it's like you know resting seven 17 minutes between sets not not gonna cut it right no. And, you know, and of course, anybody that's been around, you know, off season, you may take a little longer rest, uh, especially if you're going really heavy. If you're oh, yes. you know, leg day, I mean, our leg days are brutal and you, it, you were going to take a little longer rest on those days. Of course, as I get closer to shows, my weight is probably going to drop. I, in the rest, you know, it may be 30 seconds then, you know, maybe the most a minute, but it's going to be bang, bang. I'm super set and try set and I'm doing giant sets. I, you know, all these old school terms, but they still work. I mean, that, so here's one of my little jokes I always say is, um, you'll, you'll hear all these new terms and basically someone just basically took an old school principle and they kind of wrapped a new bow on it and a new name. And, you know, it's, and it's maybe a hair twist on it, but there's really no difference. You, you go back, find the old books. Like, um, I, 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 so I love Franco Colombo. I, you know, people, I don't think give him enough credit to the sport. Obviously, you know, Arnold's training partner and a great competitor, but I bought books of his and tape. I remember um, buying a set of tapes, cassette tapes, for for those kids that don't know what that is, but um, back in the day, and I listened to that thing constantly and what his philosophies were on training. And and I believe he got his doctorate at one point. I can't remember what it was in, but he was a pretty smart fella. What's that? Well, he was a chiropractor, right? 
Oh, that's right. That's what it was. Yes. And so he was sharp and I, and I loved listening to him. And, and so I, I liked some of his philosophies early on. And so, you know, a lot of pro overload or progressive load, stuff like that. But I still take that kind of old school mentality where I don't do a ton of sets per exercise. And I just wrote an article on this one here, just a bit. It was just called sets actually. And so usually my first exercise, I'll, you know, of course you're doing some, if it's the bar or whatever, it's going to be 10, 15 reps. You're, you're just trying to, you got to warm the joints up, especially as you get older. That or typically I'll do it on the Bowflex first. If I'm doing chest that day, I'll get in, I'll just do set, you know, some good reps on that. It gets me warmed up great. The first set I might shoot for like 15 and that's, and that's going to be that one. That might be the only exercise I do four sets on. Other ones, it's going to be three. And I pretty much take the philosophy of like that reverse or down pyramid. My first one, I'm shooting for 10. And it better be challenging. You know, if I'm getting 10 easy, then I totally didn't help myself out there. So um, what I was going to say a minute ago was one of the best tools, and I tell this because people, I have stacks of them. People see me with it all the time, is my notebook. I have little bitty notebooks. And I always say, this is the best tool in the gym because it keeps you accountable. Because I, my dad was always, would always say the dullest pencil is better than the sharpest mind. And of course, as you get older, you start to go, oh, yeah, that makes total sense now, you know, because I can't remember what I did yesterday, let alone last week, what I did on this, you know, set. So when you flip the page and go, okay, that's what I did last week. So my goal, and this kind of comes from some of Franco's was I try to shoot for maybe one more rep or five more pounds the next week. And I just am always trying to progress. Now we know you're going to hit plateaus and hit limits. And that goes back to kind of what we were talking about earlier. That's when you maybe need to change it up, shock the muscle, do different things, or just change the lips and, you know, so on and so forth. But um, so pretty much I do that 10, then I do the seven. And then my third set, I'm shooting for five. Um, and it's of course adding weight and, and just getting it and then, you know, moving on to the next. So if it's chest day, usually it'd be like barbell incline, flat barbell, incline dumbbell, flat dumbbell, and then, you know, flies and some of my arc movements after that. But that's pretty much, I've stayed with that almost my whole career. And, and I, still, I still enjoy that. Now, one I kind of came up with on my own and the article's on my site and I explain this to people and it's kind of confusing. So you may have to read this one, but I'll do this one as I get ready for shows. And it's just an unbelievable workout. And my boys love it. You just can't do it all the time. Um, so I call it the Tetris 10. And the reason why I, was, I love Tetris, great game, um, puzzle game. But the idea is you're trying to fit like the puzzle and the blocks to, to make it be efficient. So the goal is kind of everybody's philosophy is the best uh, rep range for building muscles, about 10 reps. I always laugh. And I, like I said, this is part of the, that recent article I just wrote was when we used to get the old bodybuilding magazines, like every workout was three sets of 10. And for some reason, I always went, this doesn't make sense. I, I, if I did 10 with this weight, I probably can't do 10 with this weight and I definitely probably can't do 10 with this weight. And if I'm doing the same weight, all three sets, how is that going to help me? And like I said, that's where luckily I, I had been reading. And, and like I said, I had uh, Franco's tapes and different tapes where he was kind of telling me different. So I kind of always got to that philosophy of, you know, I think that the magazines just don't want you to get hurt. And they're, they kind of throw out this cookie cutter, you know, workout of, Hey, three sets of 10 on everything. You're good. You know? And it's like, and I kind of went, this, this doesn't make sense to me. So, but the thing that did make sense is, you know, the, so what I try to do is I try to research as much as I can. I've done this for years and you'll hear everybody's different philosophies, but somewhere in there, you'll kind of find that little hair of truth that everybody kind of says. So 10 reps was always kind of that truth of if you want to build muscle, you need to be in that, you know, eight to 10 or eight to 12 rep range to build muscle. Because kind of you're getting under five, you're working more strength, you get above 15, you're basically doing cardio, you know? So, so I kind of went with that idea. And I, so my, my philosophy is on the Tetris 10 is every set, and I'm doing three sets, I'm going to get to 10. Now, how I decided to do that was if I didn't have a training partner, you know, a spotter, which, in, and I think I did see that one with uh, Philip, you were talking with Philip about the training partner is huge. I mean, having a training partner, I always joke, I think it's always been harder to find a training partner than a wife, you know, because you have to find someone that has similar goals, the same schedule, which is almost impossible, you know, and the same motive, you know, to, to drive yourself. So for years, guys, oh, yeah, I want to work out with you. I'm like, 
are you sure? <laughs> you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to handle this. And sure enough, they'd last about a week and I'd never see them again. And so I kind of, I always joke now I had to kind of raise my two lifting partners from, from day one, <laughs> you know, so I got my two boys and, and they know, they know what we do and what it's like. But, um, so yeah, going back to the Tetris 10 is, so my first set, it's going to be a challenging weight. My goal is to get 10 again. So if I get 10, good. Okay. I'm done with that one. So then I add my weight for my second set. So say, obviously it should be challenging. I should not be getting 10. So say I get seven. Now what I do is I quickly strip off the weight that I put on. Then I go back to my first set weight and I finish out. So say I get three. So now it's seven plus three is 10. So, okay, I'm done with that one. So the third set is where it gets a little more challenging. So obviously we're adding weight from our second set onto the third set. So, so I get, say I get four. And, I, and I'm failing. My goal, I, I truly believe I'm trying to fail on each one. I still have that philosophy. Um, so say I get four and I failed on four. I rack it. I strip off. Now I go back to my second set weight and I see how many I can do with that. Most likely I'm, I'm beat. I'm getting everything I can. I'll probably get like three. So say I get three. Now I strip back off and I go back to my first set weight and I just finished out my last three and usually I can. So now I've just done 30 reps, but that the intensity of that 30 rep completely changes because in right. actuality, I probably did like six sets, but really it was three. It's three in my mind, but it really was six. But that workout has been one of my favorites now. And I've been doing that oh, at least 10 years. Wow. That it, came up it, that, that's not every workout though, is it? No. And that's, and that's one, um, I'll do that one maybe during a shock week, but usually I'll do that as I'm getting ready for shows. I love it for getting ready for shows because obviously the calorie burn is phenomenal, but I'm still getting great intensity and a good in good lifting and obviously minimal rest. So I, I'd still do quite a bit of cardio. I mean, you kind of have to, but you know, I think a goal and you'll hear different bodybuilders say this is, and this goes back to efficiency. If you have a better efficiency in the gym, you know, and I try to track everything I have, you know, a watch that tracks calories and your heart rate, and it does the best it can. They're not perfect, but at least it'll give you an idea and a benchmark to work from. So if I can be more efficient in the gym, then I don't have to do as much cardio on the outside. Because of course, no one likes cardio. <laughs> people that do, I don't know. So there's, there are those people that like to run, I guess. But yeah, I mean, the, especially like morning cardio, the, that's the brutal one. But if I can be better in the gym that I don't have to kill myself on the outside, then, you know, that's always a good thing. So, so that was one reason I kind of came up with it and I, and I love it. And I'll, and I, I mean, I do that with super setting. I'll do that with giant sets and it's just, it's brutal, but I like to start that one usually about a month out. I tried it one year. Um, and I'm really going to go for it this year. Cause I, like I said, when I start getting ready for the big show, I get so determined and focused. I said, you know what? I'm going to try this eight weeks out. And, and so keep in mind, I'm still adding weight every week. So say I was doing bench press that week and I, my first set was two plates and I did 10. Then my next set was two plates and say a 10 or 15 on the edges, you know, and then the last set was two plates and 25 or say three plates. I would still be adding five pounds every week from that first week. So I'm tracking this for that many weeks. So by the time you're hitting your third and fourth weeks, it's, it's brutal and it's long. I mean, these are two, two and a half hour workouts.